The Russians are coming. We're going to be running a Vepr 12 today. Going to put some 12 gauge rounds through this and see how it goes. America! What's up guys, it's Mr. Guns. Today we're running the, the Vepr 12. This is from the Molot factory in Russia. It's uh, similar to the Sega 12 that you may be uh, familiar with. I haven't spent a lot of time running semi-auto AK platform 12 gauges in the past. They used to be pretty plentiful and cheap, uh, but there's been some importation bans in the last few years. I, I'm 90% certain they're banned from importation right now. If anybody has any other information on that, just leave it in the comments. So we're going to check this gun out up close, and then we're going to shoot it a little bit and uh, see what we think. So here she is, the full-size shot of it. And we'll kind of start at the back and go to the front. So you see we have this stock. These Vepers do come in different configurations of various stock types and folders and things like that. This one's not a folder. It's a fixed stock. It does have this adjustable cheek piece here. As we move forward, as you know, this is an AK Action 12 gauge. It does have this kind of nifty little thing you don't usually see here on AKs where you can push the safety latch down and it kind of pops out of the way. So that's kind of neat with it being right there next to the trigger well. It, it kind of, sometimes it kind of gets in the way, but other times it's helpful. You can feed it various magazines. It's interesting that this magazine goes directly into the receiver instead of being one of those rock and lock magazines like a normal AK uh, does. It has your typical AK charging handle. This is actually built on an RPK receiver instead of an AK receiver, so they're a little thicker and a little bit better built for uh, things like this that are gonna require a little bit more horsepower. It's got a nice end on it and then you can see the gas system here it's rumored that the gas system is really good and can cycle just about anything some people call it a self-regulating gas system but since there's no regulator in it that's not technically correct it's really just a gas system that runs really well and the the goal of this thing according to the uh to the internets is that the russians put this thing out uh for both hunting and for uh, military use and then it really picked up a lot of traction in IPSC uh, and competition type shooting and a lot of people are kind of displeased that uh, these things are banned from importation since a lot of people were using them for competitive reasons. It's a really neat configuration. The uh, Sega mags can be modified somewhat to put into here but these can't don't work with the Sega magazines. This one's built in the Molot factory in Russia which is separate from the Ismash factory, which I can't really pronounce that word, so I'm sure if you're Russian, you're laughing at me. Uh, that factory produces the Sega 12s uh, that were so plentiful in the late 90s and early 2000s before that, that importation on those kind of got stopped. These come in different configurations and different uh, stock types and barrel lengths and things. This one actually is gonna eventually be cut down and turned into a machine gun for us. So that's kind of the close up on the gun itself. And I guess we're going to talk a little bit about the ammo that we're running. So this gun is rumored to be able to run just about anything. I know that some semi-automatic shotguns are going to be a little bit more particular than others. So what I've got here is just a disgusting mixed bag of ammunition. It's literally a bag with a bunch of crap in it. You see a little bit of 22 mag falling out there. We've got all kinds of mix in here. I've got, uh, this is going to be a like a double alt buck round and then you know there's like number six in here i've got some number eight shot here in winchester this is going to end up being uh hopefully a low brass round um oh that's a number six in low brass i've got um all kinds of crap in here so as you can see this is just a garbage collection of junk ammo here's a low brass number eight Oh, spilling things. I've got high brass number six all over the place. Uh, so we're just gonna mix this up. Colby that's here with us, uh, shooting uh, with my camera. Here's Colby over here. What's up, Colby? Hey, what's up? I'm gonna get Colby to mix these in a magazine so that I don't know what I'm getting. And then we're gonna just shoot whatever. That's a fun game to play with your friends. 
if you are out shooting 12 gauges with them and you have a bunch of crap ammo, just mix it all up. You never know what you're gonna get. It's, sometimes it can be a surprise that rattles your teeth, which is pretty cool. So here is uh, the full setup. We're gonna go run some guns. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and run this gun. As I mentioned, our friend Colby has uh, loaded this magazine with God knows what. I see the top round is a double off buck. An interesting fact about this Vepper is that it has this bolt hold open. You don't usually see this on AKs, but it's a hold open on the last round like you would normally see in like a pistol or something like that. And again, to emphasize what I mentioned a minute ago, most AK platform guns have the rock and lock mechanism where you, you know, you kind of stick the front of the magazine in and then you rock it back onto the mag catch. This one doesn't do that. This one just goes straight in and you can bang it. And here's the mag release here. And then right here on the edge of the trigger guard, you have the bolt catch release that whenever you press on that, it goes ahead and chambers it. So. Uh, here's your safety up and down just like on every AK and then of course if it was full auto it would stop in the middle This guy's gonna end up being full auto with us. We're gonna end up cutting it down But so what we're gonna end up doing I'm gonna shoot uh, Here at some of these targets and we're just gonna see how it runs for a couple rounds and see if I can put things on target And then here in just a minute we'll mag dump. So let's go with it I'm gonna pull it up just a little bit. It's got an adjustable sight like a typical AK has. Slides back and forth, so. I don't know what that even was. Ah, uh, it jammed up, but this was on a low brass uh, number eight, it looks like. So this is a Peters, it's a really light round. And I am hitting the steel. I can see it splattering, but these light loads are not making as much noise. So that's what's going on right now. Well, let me adjust my side again, just in case. I'm kind of lean into it a little bit more. I know I'm not missing. Yeah, no telling what that was. Is that it? No, nah, it didn't even cycle that one. So that's a number eight Winchester. Yep. So there it is. See it locked back, like I said. So let's just go see what the target looks like. So you can see we were definitely not missing the steel. It was, uh, there's a lot of shot all over this thing, but with that lead being so soft and not having much mass on something this heavy, uh, you know, if this were skin or a duck or something like that, it's gonna penetrate just fine. But, you know, this lead is just so much mass, or I'm sorry, this steel is so much mass, it was hard for it to make that loud pinging sound that you would normally hear with a pistol. But there's shot all over everything. You can see we've got some overspray on the other targets. But all in all, I mean, it's a shotgun, so what do you expect it to do? So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and run another magazine or two, uh, and we'll just see if it continues to feed pretty well like it did last time. The only time we really had a problem was on some low brass stuff. So let's push a couple magazines through it, and then maybe after that we'll do a quick mag dump and see how things go. So a lot of semi-auto shotguns are notorious with low brass loads. And low brass, just in case you don't know, a high brass would be, there would be more metal up on here. And generally those are hotter charges. This one's low brass. Semi-auto shotguns, Benelli M4s, things like that are notorious for having trouble with these light loads. And since that last run that we did got kind of funky with the light load, what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna run five of these light load rounds through here and see what it looks like. Magazine's in, we drop it with the catch. Off it goes. You guys ready? I'm gonna adjust my cheek piece. It adjusts by pulling backwards and rotating. It's not the greatest stock in the world. Yeah, see, that one didn't eject. Let's try again. 
that one did not eject well either. So it does not like to cycle these light loads. Yep, every time it's having ejection problems. This one's kind of stuck. Um, all right, I'm gonna clear this real quick. So anytime we have to clear a jam or something, we wanna remove our magazine. We wanna make sure that barrel's pointed the right way. And then that way we can kind of dig at it and get what we gotta get. This one's got some plastic stuck. There it went, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the magazine back. We're gonna run these last couple. All right, still has that thing and it's crushing. It's trying to shove it back into the chamber and it's crushing up that front end plastic on there. So last round of this stuff. Yeah, so the the low brass stuff doesn't cycle well. That's the diagnosis here from uh, Mr. Dr. Guns, if you want to call me that. It's a joke. All right, here we go. I'm going to run some more uh, high brass stuff and like some buckshot. I, I hope that that'll just cycle right through, so we'll check that out. So this is a high brass number six. Number six is a heavier load than the seven or eight shot. Seven or eight is usually used for things like sporting clays or skeet or something where you just want a light load and something fun to shoot all day, especially with the lower brass. And then this is the number six that's more suitable for things like woodland game, things like uh, squirrels or rabbits, something that's small. And then usually if you're gonna be a bird hunter, you're gonna move up to something a little heavier, uh, especially for something like ducks or geese that's a bigger bird. And we don't usually use lead for that anymore because most of the time it's over water. And in the United States, they want you to use steel or bismuth or something else. So we're gonna test out this number six since it's kind of a medium road, but it is high brass, like I mentioned here. So we're gonna run it, see if it runs okay in this Vepr. having trouble getting it in the mag. All right, here we go. There we go, we're gonna drop mag release. Yeah, clearly better cycling round. But it doesn't have to be something like buckshot because that number six ran good. It looks like the key to really getting this heavy gas system moving is to have the high brass, which is not a surprise because there's a lot of mass in the gas system. So I'm gonna go grab another load type and see what it looks like. So what we're gonna do this time around, I went and dug around and believe it or not, I can't find any buckshot like an idiot. I didn't bring any today. So I'm gonna shoot this big mixed bag of high brass. We noticed that it doesn't do well on the low brass stuff, but I wanna try a bunch of mix. Um, I've got a number eight and a number six. I've got some seven and a halves. This is a number four to number two and a six and a seven and a half. So this will pretty much cover like most of your bird and small game rounds. So we're gonna run these, just this weird mix and see how well the gun goes. All right, so here we go. We're gonna shoot our big mix bag. Definitely kick a little more than the low brass stuff. Oh, brutal. It clearly feeds the high brass better. I tell you, a 12 gauge with high brass ammo is about as hard a kicking gun as there is. I've, you know, I've shoot a lot of big bore stuff and 300 wind mag, things like that. These 12s are, they kick you just as good as anything. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna load up, that was almost all Winchester ammo. I'm gonna go ahead and load up uh, a bunch of number six Remington and we are going to just mag dump it and see if it feeds real well. I'm not gonna worry about trying to hit targets nearly as much as just banging stuff out. All right, mag dump time, we're gonna see how it feels to hang on to this guy. Well, didn't feed that one.
Lot to it. Lot to it. Well, there we go. There she is, and that's how she feeds. Okay, kids, so what did we learn today? We learned that this guy really does feed pretty well, that he doesn't like low velocity, low brass rounds, but that's okay because those don't really have a lot of practical use anyway besides like skeet shooting and that kind of thing. And if you're going to do that, then just use a pump gun if you're just obsessed with low brass. It does kick a lot less. This thing is kind of a beast to hang on to. You probably saw there at the end when I was shooting that mag dump that it kind of rocked me around a little bit. There's a lot to this gun. You got to lean into it. Um, it did feed well. Everything was good. I think those Remingtons there at the end, you know, that might have been a fluke. But just like with any semi-automatic 12 gauge, you're going to want to know what rounds it likes the best anyway. All in all, this gun is really fun. We're going to chop this thing down and make it full auto. So I guess we're going to find out pretty quick how the feeding and injection works. So anyway, that's the gun. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to smash like and subscribe and all that. Follow us on Facebook and check out our website at mrguns.com. And if you're ever in Plano, Texas, come see us, man. We'd love to hang out with you. Uh, but I guess that's about it. Everybody out there, the gun people are a community. Let's all be nice to each other. Y'all take it easy.